in the early 1990s, one of the most horrible events in the history of the world occurred, the genocide in Rwanda. In that genocide, Hutus battling against Tutsis, a million people were killed in less than nine months. When the genocide began, there were 380,000 Adventists, Seventh-day Adventists in Rwanda. When it ended, 100,000 were dead. In six months, 100,000 Adventists were slain. Not because they were Adventists, but because they were part of the Minari tribe. Af in recent years, I've traveled to Rwanda on a number of occasions, speaking in large stadiums. There are trials going on right now in Rwanda trying the killers. As we traveled there, I talked to my host, the union president, Eman Rutalinga, and I said, Pastor Rutalinga, did anybody of, that you know die in the genocide? He said, Pastor Mark, I was out preaching the day that the radio announcement came, cut down the tall trees. And when the radio announcement came, cut down the tall trees, tens of thousands of militia, largely young people with machetes, ran through the streets, killing every Tutsi they could see. The killing was so great that the bodies stacked up in the streets and dogs came and ate them. The killing was so great that they threw thousands of bodies into the river, and the river was clogged with bodies. Pastor Rutalinga was out preaching as union president. The militia came into the church, brought out his wife, his three children, his grandchildren, and killed him outside the church that day. I talked to the union, the conference president, did you lose anybody? He said, yes, I did. I said, who did you lose? He said, I lost my wife, my seven children. I talked to my driver, did you lose anybody? Yeah, I lost 47 members of my family. I'm the only one that survived. As I talked to them, Pastor Amandra Tulinga said to me, he said, Mark, I want you to meet a woman. And when you meet her, your life will be changed forever. His na her name is Adele Selfu. And so we got in the truck and we went out this rough, road, back country, outside of Kigali in Rwanda. And Pastor Rutalinga told me the story as we went. This woman had been with her husband when the killers came and she held his hand as they put a machete and split his head open and as they hit him in the neck and they murdered him. She was there. And Pastor Amand Rutalinga said, Mark, I believe she will tell you the story. As I walked into her house, I saw a picture of her pastor, Seventh-day Adventist pastor, husband on the wall. And in respect, I simply walked over and stood and looked at the picture. And I thought about what it would be like if I were holding my wife's hand and somebody ran to me in the horror that she would go through as they split my head open with a machete. As we sat down, we made small talk for a while and Mrs. Self who came in the room and I broached the subject very carefully. I said, Sister Selfu, I understand you were with your husband when the militia hacked him to death. It may be very difficult to talk about it, but would you like to share it with me? She began to cry and she said, Pastor, I'll share it. She said, we got word that the militia was coming closer and closer to our village. We fled with 45 others to a Catholic church in the basement. We thought it would be a hiding place and they may go by the church. As we were in the basement, the militia came in with machetes. They began to hack and hack and hack. Actually, there were 60 people in the room. 45 were killed immediately. She said, I held my husband's hand and somebody came and just hit him with a machete and, I, and the blood from his head splat all over me. She said, it was horrible, Pastor. And then the person took the machete and hit me in the head. She pulled back her beautiful black hair, and I saw a scar that began here and went down the center of her head. She said, Pastor, they then hit me in my wrist, trying to chop off my wrist. She held up her wrist. It was just flapping around. She said, Pastor, then they hit me on the shoulder. And, I, and she pulled down her dress a little bit, and I saw the scar on her shoulder. She said, they left me for dead. And I, my body lay among the dead bodies for three days. At the end of three days, the militia had moved on. So she said, villagers came to bury the dead. Somebody, before they buried me, felt my pulse, and I still had a pulse. So they took me 
I was unconscious, they began to nurse me back. Pastor, I was in and out of hospitals for three years. By this time, the forces from outside of Rwanda that were in the Congo fought their way back, liberated the country, and they built 18 prisoners for the murderers, and they put 180,000 people in prison. Mrs. Selfo took three years to get back to health, but by now there was stability in the country. And she said to me, Pastor Mark, I have to make a decision of whether I'm going to be a bitter, angry old woman or not. And she said, I made a decision that my husband's death would not be in vain. I had the assurance beating in my heart that Jesus Christ was coming again and that the thing that my husband would want would me to go to minister to the killers. So, pastor, there's a prison not far from this village, and I became the mother of that prison. I would go in and bring blankets into the prison because of the cold nights. I would go in and bring food to the prison. I began studying the Bible with the prisoners. These were killers. One day, pastor, I was in the prison. A young man fell at my feet, and he began to kiss my feet, and I looked at his face, and he said, do you remember me? And she said, I wish I could get that face out of my mind. It was the young man in his early 20s that took the machete and chopped my husband's head in half. It was the young man. I never th knew he was in that prison. I never thought that I would see him again. It was the young man that took the machete and put the scar in my head and gave me such pain. And he said, would you forgive me? And she said, I picked him up and I hugged him and I said, I will forgive you. Pastor, I studied the Bible with him for six months. Pastor, he stood up before the whole prison and we assembled all the prisoners in the prison yard the day of his baptism and he confessed his sin. Pastor, we baptized him. Now, pastor, he got amnesty after a few years and was let out of the prison. But here's the problem. His father and mother were killed in the genocide. He had no place to live. Pastor, I adopted him as my son. Would you like to meet him? My heart was beating. Per beads of perspiration stood out of my head. I looked at the pastor's picture who this man had killed. I thought a killer was going to walk through the door. And Lewis walked through the door. A gentle smile on his face. A sparkle in his eyes. And Amon Rutilingas, rather... Mrs. Selfu walked over and put her arms around him. And she said, let me introduce you to my adopted son. She said, one day when Jesus comes, one day when Jesus comes, all the suffering will be worth it all. One day that Jesus comes, all the heartache will be worth it all. One day that Jesus comes, all the burdens will be worth it all. One day when Jesus comes, the past will be gone. She said, what inspires me is the forward look Jesus is coming again. Is there something in your heart right now that needs to be dealt with? Have you been harboring some bitterness? Is there some sin secretly in your life? If God can transform Adele Selfu, if God can take that woman and take any bitterness, any anger out of her heart, God can do miracles in your life. The backward look leads you to the cross and forgiveness. The upward look leads you to receive the power of the living Christ in his care. The forward look leads you to put aside anything that would keep you from being ready for the coming of Jesus. There is nothing worth clinging to. As we bow our heads to pray, is there somebody here today that you just want to lift your hand and say, Lord, I need the forgiveness. I need the forgiveness that you only can give. Lord, Lord, I need that forgiveness. I need that freedom from guilt. Lord, I have kind of let my religious experience slip. Lord, I've been careless with my experience. But there's grace that flows from the cross. There's mercy and forgiveness that flows from the cross. Lord, I lift my hand just now. And I say, Lord, grant to me your forgiveness and mercy. And I want this day to be a day of new beginnings for me. Would you just raise your hand? Let me make it plain and specific. This first appeal, somebody that drifted away, somebody that has some guilt in their life, somebody that needs God's forgiveness and grace, and you're saying, I can't leave this auditorium without lifting my hand and saying, God, grant me your grace. Just lift your hand. You may put your hand out. Is there somebody going through some burden? 
some struggle, financial burden, burden with your children, burden in your health, and you sense that Christ is the living Christ and you need that upward look today, and you want to say, Jesus, I lay my burden at your feet, but I believe by faith today, at this moment, that you're giving me comfort and strength, and I'm laying that burden down for Jesus, would you just lift your hand? Some burden you need to lift down. Now, you're not lifting your hand and you're saying, oh, I hope Jesus may sometime in the future deliver me from the burden. No, you're saying, I believe right now Christ is giving me peace. I believe right now Christ is lifting that burden. I believe right now Christ is giving me new courage. Jesus sees your hand. He knows your heart. You may put your hand down. There's somebody here that you sense there's a work to be done in you yet. There are still things you cling to, attitudes. There are still habits you cling to. And you say, God, I want to be part of an army of workers that goes out into Chicago, out into greater Chicago land, to witness for you. But God, I know that I need some cleansing within. And I want to cry out with David, create within me a clean heart, O oh God. Renew within me a right spirit. I want to say with David, Lord, whatever you need to do in me, do it. If you want to say, Jesus, whatever work that needs to be done in me, I want you to do it. Would you just lift your hand? Jesus, thank you for the cross. Thank you that in Jesus, our guilt is gone. That in Christ, there is no condemnation that he giveth and giveth and giveth again. Thank you that the backward look leads us to peace. Thank you that the upward look reminds us that you're still alive. You still sit on your throne. You're still there for us. In the ups and downs of life, we look upward, away from all that's around us, to the Christ that has not yet left his throne. And Father, when the journey's long, the road's rough, help us look to the future. Grant to us a sense that the blessed hope is just around the corner, that Jesus is coming and coming again. And we praise you for that. Do your work of cleansing in us, we pray. In Christ's name, amen.